as you guys probably know, I really enjoy modifying cars, I enjoy modified cars, and I love driving. But there's one modification that I think is honestly the most overlooked modification, and it's really the most important modification, and that's, ding, 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 the driver modification. We as car enthusiasts get caught up in the, I wanna lower my car, I wanna put the best wheels on it, I wanna bolt a turbocharger kit on, which I generally do recommend, that's awesome. We wanna put a performance exhaust and an intake and all the cool stuff, right? And we tend to neglect the most important thing, and that's learning how to drive. You got your driver's license. You know how to actually drive your vehicle from point A to point B. But what I'm talking about is more of a performance-oriented driving. Becoming a better performance driver has been a goal for mine for many, many years, and it's great to finally be able to start executing on that. In addition to doing a couple of autocross events, I've done some other performance driving with BMW and down at the Bondurant School, and that has opened my eyes up to a world that I didn't understand at all. Getting your car from A to B safely is very different than how we behave on a course, on a racetrack, on an autocross course, rallycross, whatever it is. For me, that first time in a true performance driving setting was a real eye-opener. It was get behind the wheel, have a ton of confidence because I've been driving forever, mash the throttle, hit that first corner, and the car just spins out of control. And the instructor looking at me going, well, that didn't work out so well. After a handful of opportunities to have some drive, some true driving instruction, right? Not your buddy next door telling you go faster, go faster, or weaving in and out of traffic. To have some true driving instruction from a professional or even a seasoned person that's been behind the wheel, you know, autocrossing 20 years or an actual professional driving instructor is so valuable. Not only does it improve your skills on the course, but it improves your skills as a traffic driver, a normal everyday driver. One of the big keys that I learned through this instruction is that we tend to keep our eyes lower and look closer than we actually should. Now, in traffic, we have to do that a little bit in case a dog or a kid darts out in front of us, but when we're talking about performance driving, the further we can look ahead and the more we can plan our route around a turn through a corner, through a slalom, the faster we're going to be able to drive through it. Comparing my first autocross event in my R32 to my second was a whole different world. That second event, I felt so much more confident and comfortable in the car. One of the best things that I did starting that autocross day off was walking the course seven or eight times, beginning to visualize, okay, I should have my car close to this cone on the driver's side or I need to take this corner wide, here's a spot where I'm going to start braking, here's a spot where I'm going to start accelerating, and really begin to develop that plan for the course, for the event, for the day. On my last autocross event, first run ran 34 something seconds because I wasn't trying to go all in. As the day progressed, my second run was like 32 in some change seconds because I was trying to be a bit more aggressive got that time all the way down to 29.99 something throughout the day because I began to feel more comfortable and confident as the day went on. One of the other and probably more valuable things is having someone that's experienced ride with me, giving me pointers on the course. But what was even better, because it's hard, right? It's hard when you're, you're all in it, you're focusing on the road, you're trying to look ahead at two turns up, and someone's saying, and you can barely hear them, slow down, speed up, hit the brake, go faster, right? Turn more, turn less. That's hard to compute in my brain and react to it because you're not acting, you're reacting at that point. What really did help was the recap afterward. And as you approach this first pointer, your car starts to understeer, so you head down over the hill, and at that point, you start to lead up your throttle, just kind of maintain that so if you guys get the opportunity, I highly recommend one, you get out and try this. Now, you don't need a performance car. I mean, by all of today's standards, my R32 is not fast, right? It doesn't handle the best. It doesn't accelerate the fastest. It's front wheel drive, basically, but it does have some rear wheel drive intervention. 
uh, it doesn't matter the car because you really do want to learn how to drive the car. Now, that being said, what I see a lot of times is we, and I'm including myself, we get excited, right? We, we just drove the car and we could see in the video, and you can see in my video where the lean of the car is really heavy. So we think, how do I improve the lean? How do I get rid of this condition? And what I'm really trying to avoid is modifying the car to overcome my lack of driving skills. And that's a really hard thing to overcome because you want the car to be better even though the biggest improvement could still be made even though I think my R32 is set up pretty well and I think I'm becoming a much better driver, the biggest improvement to be made really is the driver modification. My feeling is this, until I can describe exactly what I want the car to do, where it's not doing that, I shouldn't be making the modification. For example, the rear sway bar upgrade on the R32 is a very popular, very common and proven modification. That's gonna change the flex in the back end and a lot of people say that's a way to kind of get the back end to come around a little faster than with the stock setup. Now, I think that's great and honestly, that's probably a modification I'm going to make over the winter time at some point is replacing that rear sway bar with an upgraded one. But what I don't wanna get caught up in is I want the suspension to be firmer so that it doesn't roll so much, so that'll make me faster. Remember, when you learn how to drive the car and then change something, you've changed the dynamics. You've changed potentially the balance of the car. Even, even changing brake pad composition can change the balance in the way the car behaves. We really wanna make sure that we're learning the basics and the mid-range and the advanced driving techniques because those techniques are going to allow you to understand where the car is very good and where the car needs improvement. And once, again, for me, once I can explain this is what the car's not doing that I want it to do so I can go faster, so I can cut a corner shorter, so I can ex get into the throttle faster out of a turn, so that I can brake later, whatever it is, until I can accurately describe that, I'm not going to make big change modifications to the vehicle. And really, the best way to understand that is being behind the wheel in a performance setting. Now, you can do some things, being careful, you can do some things on the highway. One of the, uh, one of the instructors, Rob, gave me a really great tip. The reflectors that come along on the side of the road, what you can do is you can kind of roll your car to where it starts to make noise on the driver's side tire, then scooch over to the passenger side where it makes noise on the passenger side, that's gonna to begin to give you the actual spatial relationship between where you're sitting, the car, and where those tires actually stop. Because we can't see that, right? We can't see up and over on the side or in the back corner. So we don't know, maybe we can take that corner sooner and get closer to the cone without knocking it over, right? They always tell you if you're not hitting cones, you're not driving fast enough or you're, not, you're driving the course too long, basically. Uh, so that's another way to begin to understand and develop the spatial relationship between yourself in the driver's seat, the vehicle, and where it's actually at instead of where you think it's at. Now there is one thing that you could convince me otherwise that could be a modification made instantly that really will help you be a better driver and it'll help the car perform better, and that's the right tires. guys. So often and so much people take for granted how important the right tire for the situation is. Now, I'm running Firehawk Indy 500s on my car, which I think I think they're great. They perform really, really well. Going through three or four different sets of tires to find the ones that really do work the best, I think is a great spend of your money, even though tires can be really expensive. I think that's a great spend of your money in education going online and buying the most expensive coilover kit and all the sway bars and upgraded brakes and all the performance things, right? You load up your cart and hit buy are not necessarily going to make the car faster in a given situation. Eventually those performance mods probably will decrease your time around a track, but it's that old saying, you know, a fast driver in a slow car can easily be faster than a slow driver in a fast car because it's not always about the horsepower of the car, it's about the lines and the strategy of the driver. Thank you guys for watching. Good luck with your driver modification and don't let me fool you. 
I still think you should modify your car. It's fun. I love it. It's